This is your Tech News Briefing for Tuesday, January 17th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The next generation of rockets built to launch U.S. spy satellites are going to have to meet some new requirements. The contractors building them will have to show those rockets are able to fend off interference by China and Russia, according to people briefed on an upcoming Pentagon competition. It's a sign of just how crucial governments are viewing the use of space, and it comes as private competition to supply rockets, satellites, and launch materials gets even fiercer. With me to discuss this is our aerospace reporter, Micah Maidenberg. Hi, Micah. Great to have you back on the show. Hey, Zoe. Great to be here. Let's start off with this news about the Defense Department preparing to issue new requirements that rockets that send up spy satellites to orbit be able to fend off interference. Micah, why is the Pentagon putting this into their new rules? Well, broadly speaking, they're putting it into this sort of space launch contracting round because defense officials, Pentagon leaders, are increasingly focused on China's capabilities in space. Russia's space operations have also been drawing more attention from military planners of late. In 2021, for example, the country used a missile to destroy one of its defunct satellites. And more recently, Russian officials have said that U.S. commercial satellites could be targeted if they were found to be assisting Ukraine. So, If you're the Pentagon and you're buying rockets and you're putting highly sensitive, very expensive in some cases, satellites on those rockets to go to orbit, you want some assurances that those vehicles can deliver the goods and avoid potential threats, you know, or hazards as they're providing that transportation, if you will. How are the private companies that would be bidding for these contracts reacting to this kind of request? So to be sure, this is a procurement. This is the government, the Pentagon, you know, buying services from companies. And, you know, rocket companies, a lot of them have really been tracking this very closely to see how the Defense Department is going to kind of structure this acquisition, how they're going to buy rocket launches. And we're expecting to get more details about that, you know, as soon as next month. But it's a it's a big deal for the industry because the Pentagon is a a big steady client and commands a lot of prestige and credibility and, of course, revenue that these companies are chasing after as well. I want to talk about one company in particular that really stood out over the last couple of years. That's Elon Musk's SpaceX. It conducted 61 missions last year, and Musk said back in August that he wants to complete up to 100 this year. Micah, how big a deal would that leap be, and how does SpaceX plan to accomplish that? Yeah. I mean, look, 61 missions in 2022 was already a big deal. That was by far and away the most of any private space company in the globe. And it represented, call it about a third of all orbital missions that reached orbit last year. So right just off the top, 61 is is big. Getting up to 100 would be another big leap. SpaceX has demonstrated pretty strong capacity to both build rockets and perhaps more importantly, but perhaps sometimes not discussed as much, like when their reusable components of those rockets come back to Earth, the company is very good at revamping them, getting them back into shape so they can be quickly used again. And so part of it is getting from 61 to 100 orbital flights is that sort of on the ground turnaround of the boosters that listeners may remember or have seen before online or or whatnot, like coming back to Earth. And that's going to be a big challenge to sort of do that almost at a 100 times next year. It's a lot of work. You don't have a lot of room for error when you're trying to quickly turn these around. But that's the plan, at least. How much competition does SpaceX face when it's trying to do these launches? This year, a lot of new rockets are slated to come onto the market. United Launch Alliance, which is owned by Lockheed Martin and Boeing, is planning to test fly its forthcoming vehicle, Vulcan Centaur, relatively soon. Blue Origin has been pushing to get its new Glenn rocket up and operational, though it's not clear if the company is going to try to launch it this year. And there's other rockets kind of in the works. So even as SpaceX pushes toward that up to 100 orbital flight goal for the year. Other rocket companies are taking aim at the market with their own fresh vehicles to 
bring some more competition. Let me ask you about another private company, Virgin Orbit. Last week, it had a failed mission to carry commercial satellites to orbit from a new site in the UK. Can you tell us, Micah, what happened and how big a blow is this for Virgin Orbit and for the new UK site? Right. So this mission was a very high-profile launch. Of course, recall that Virgin Orbit uses a modified Boeing 747 to fly a launcher into the air where that launcher then drops from the plane and shoots off into orbit to deliver satellites. And what the company has said so far is that the rocket was dropped. It reached sort of space altitude. But at some point, like later in the mission, part of the rocket experienced an anomaly. And that anomaly prevented, you know, the mission from being successful and the satellites from being deployed as expected. The company hasn't said much yet or provided much more details beyond that. They're still doing analysis of data and investigating kind of what went wrong. The UK, more generally, hasn't been launching the same kind of way as the US and China, which are by far and ahead out front in terms of orbital missions. And this was the first orbital flight, first orbital launch from England, and it didn't work. So it's not the outcome by any means that Virgin Orbit and the local spaceport and other officials were hoping for. That's our aerospace reporter, Micah Maidenberg. Thanks for joining us, Micah. Thank you, Zoe. Have a great one. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.